hello, hello. Happy day, happy life, happy journey. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Getting started a little late here. We had some weird computer problems, but it's all going good. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good and very good. I'm down here at Rhythmia. Oh my goodness, what an amazing week we're having. I cannot wait to tell you all about it. Um, hey, brother Isaac, thanks for joining. Uh, so, wow, I'm here with Rhythmia. We have a private group here this week, um, and I, I can't tell you their names, <laughs> but the really amazing uh, thought leaders are here for a private event. And it is such a wonderful experience to see leaders who, you know, people go to conferences and pay lots of money to hear the advice and wisdom of these people. They're here this week in a private group all together and watching them go through everything that we go through. Hey, Gord, great to see you, brother. Thursdays with JJ, Thursdays with Gord. Um, to watch them, to watch these thought leaders go through the process that everybody goes through and to watch the humility in which they, um, in which they are processing the same shit that we process, right? No difference. They're dealing with the same stuff. Um, thank you, Isaac. They're dealing with the same stuff all the time um, that we are. Not enoughness, self-love, forgiveness, same issues. It's amazing. One of the guests that we have here um, was helping me. Happy day, Gail, and helping me. Um, and Stefan, great. Good to see you. Uh, Steven, excuse me. Uh, one of the guests was helping me stretch, right? He he's, uh, has a company that, that um, produces all this equipment for stretching and, um, and health, overall health. And he was stretching and he told me, he goes, you know, let me give you the, the, a little information on the science of stretching, right? And he said, you know, you stretch in the morning and if you, you, you extend that muscle and then, um, and, and then throughout the day it contracts. Right, and you wonder like why in the uh, why it, it, well, I stretched this morning? Why am I tight this afternoon? Right, and he said you got to stretch. You know, you extend that muscle, and it's going to contract. So if you just did thirty second stretches throughout the day, um, you would continue to keep that muscle extended, and then at night uh, it's going to contract again as you sleep, and then you stretch again, but you're going to keep twenty percent. And then it's going to stretch again, and then it's going to contract, and you're going to keep another 20%. And it's going to stretch again, then it's going to contract, and you're going to keep another 20%. So little by little and over time, your muscle is now fully extended uh, and doesn't go through this contraction back to this in the same place. I thought, wow, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. We need to do that spiritually. So the idea came for this talk today on this, the principle and the practice of the science of stretching spiritually mentally, emotionally, and physically. Like, where are we stretching? What are we stretching into? What's our growing edge? Where are we? Hey, cuz, hey, Gani, great to see you. What is our growing edge? What are we stretching into? The science of stretching, right? So physically, our muscles gotta stretch. I was just going through that. And, and the idea is, the principle is, there's gonna be a, a, an expansion and a contraction, and if you wanna keep the contraction from cutting too too contracted, you've got to stretch a little bit throughout the day. You've got to maintain your practice. Sounds like a plan. So how are we going to translate that into spiritual principle? So what are you stretching into today? The principle in spiritually is that the universe is progressive, right? That the universe is progressive. In other words, it's constantly expanding. It's constantly growing. Uh, and, and life is always promoting life, even in the winter. Right, even at the end of the season, it looks like death. That's just a rebirth for the spring, right? So no matter what the appearances are, life is always moving forward. Life is always expressing more life. And so in the same way, we are. We are, we are part of that life. That very life is within us. And we must go through these expansions and contractions. So the principle is the universe is, ex is progressive and expansive. And for every expansion, there is a contraction. For every inhale, there's an exhale. We can't just inhale, right? We gotta exhale sometime. So in the same way, uh, we must stretch spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically throughout the day. So that's the principle. The universe is expansive, constantly progressive. We must 
uh, every moment is, uh, uh, for every expansion, there is a contraction. We must maintain our expansion by stretching throughout the day. So, emotional stretch. How can we stretch into love emotionally, right? If, we're, if we stop throughout the day, the practice then would be every once in a while, I got to get up for 30 seconds and stretch. I got to do something. I got to, you know, somehow move my body, open up. This is a really good one too because we're so like this at our desk typing, right? So uh, we can pray to Allah, right? <laughs> Just open up, open your chest, right? Um, another great stretch physically is, um, is laying down on your back and pulling one knee up and letting the other leg just dangle off the side of the bed. And that'll open up your hip flexors. So those are our physical stretches. If we stop for 30 seconds during the day and did a physical stretch like that, then, uh, then we would maintain the uh, expansion of our muscles. We're gonna do the same thing emotionally. So emotionally, when we start to feel contracted emotionally throughout the day, can we anchor into love? Can I stretch into love? And, and what does that mean? It means all we have to do is to observe. All we have to do is notice. I'm feeling a little contracted today. It's just like I'm feeling a little contracted here. My, my neck's a little sore. I got to stretch it, right? All we have to do is observe. I'm not having very loving feelings for my office mate right now. <laughs> like, I hate the way they lick stamps. That noise they make when they drink their coffee. Eh, right? <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> right? Can I stretch into love? How can I open myself up? One easy practice to emotionally stretch into love is to get out of your head and into your heart. So I'm gonna recommend a physical practice that helps you emotionally stretch into love is tapping. Just tap your heart space, right? I'm gonna move this down so you can see. You're right, right at your sternum, right? All you gotta do is tap. Tap gently until you move out of your heart, head and into your heart. Right, it's the longest journey in the world. It's it's 15 inches, but it's the longest journey in the world. And like I say to my to the class here, and for years I thought this was 10 inches, girl. I'm t they were lying to me. It's wrong. So <laughs> 15 inches, longest journey, short distance, longest journey. Tap. So how do we stretch into love on a daily basis? Just tap your heart. When you're feeling contracted about your spouse, when you're feeling contracted about your coworker, when you're feeling contracted about yourself, I'm not having love for myself, just tap, just get into your heart and allow your heart then to be in charge. We think that the mind is the controlling organ. The mind is the faithful servant. The gift is the heart. The gift is the heart. And we've created a culture, Einstein said this, we've created a culture that puts the servant in charge of the gift. We need to put the gift, we need to put the servant in service to the gift. And we do that by tapping. First, just physically, literally moving our awareness. It's all about awareness. Where is my awareness? Okay, so that's the first piece. Where, how am I stretching into love? Can I stretch into love? All I have to do is get into my heart. Once I'm located in my heart, then I can see something different. Then I can, I can ask what the possibility is here. That's the next thing. Don't, how am I gonna love? Don't ask how, how do I love that person? How do I love that noise they make, right? <laughs> you don't have to ask the how. You just have to ask what's the possibility. Because typically, and what we see here at Rhythmia, is that whatever is annoying us, those things that offend us, those things that annoy us, those are keys. Those are keys to see the areas within ourselves that are looking to be healed. I'll tell you a quick story. There was a woman that came here that, um, that, that was complaining. She came to ceremony. She was an older woman uh, from, uh, from New York. I'm not profiling. She was from New York and in the garment industry. I'm just saying. So she, <laughs> she was older, very successful, very powerful woman, right? And she came to drink the medicine here at Rhythmia. So she comes in, first night, she does the medicine. The next day we see her at, at breakfast and she says, I gotta talk to you. What's up? She says, I went, to, I went to ceremony last night and my whole night was ruined because of the way this guy was farting and clacking. He was clicking his teeth and farting all night long. Farting and clacking and clacking and farting and farting and clacking. It ruined my night. And I had an awful night, she said. So we said, okay, look, just sit apart from him, okay? She goes, okay, fine. The next day, 
I see, we see her at, at breakfast at Roots, which is the restaurant here at Rhythmia. See her at Roots, and she says, I have to talk to you again. Let me tell you. I go, what the hell happened? She says, same thing. I wait, I saw him sit over there. I went to a different place. And then we went to drink. I took my drink. I sat at my mattress. The next thing I know, clacking and farting and farting and clacking and farting and farting and clacking and clacking. It ruined my whole night. So we said, I said, look, here's what you do. Tonight, when you go into ceremony, you wait till he gets his drink. Wherever he sits, he, now he's got his drink. You know he's going to stay there. Then you go to the opposite side, and then you'll be fine. Fine. Next morning, we see her. I have to talk to you, she says. Okay, what's up? She says, I have to tell you what happened. Uh, and, and the guy, the guy that she was with, the, the farter, he was sitting right there, right? And she's, she's always like, that's the guy. That guy right there, he's the farter. He's the one, clacking and farting and farting and clacking, right? So... So, so the next morning she comes in and she goes, I have to tell you what happened. Uh, I went in, I, he got his drink, he sat down, I went and got my drink, I sat on the opposite end, I closed my eyes, I was waiting for the medicine, and there it was again, the clacking and the farting. And I got so furious, I got so furious, and then I realized how intolerant I was how intolerant I was of this man and of everything. And in fact, I've been pushing people out of my life because I'm so intolerant of their activities, of the behaviors, of their little, the little things they do that annoy me. And I keep pushing my loved ones and my friends out of my life and now I'm alone. And I realized how intolerant I'd become and I started crying and just crying and releasing this. And she said, the minute I started crying, the clacking and the farting went away. And so we were concerned about the guy because she was pointing to the guy. That's the farter right there. So we went over to him and said, hey, how are you doing? And he goes, I'm really good. Um, I'm really good. And I, she, he goes, you know, I had to leave because I can't stand being around people that fart or that people that cry. <laughs> I can't stand being around criers. The, the point is that that man was activating something for that woman. She, he was activating the annoyance the um, offended nature, the uh, intolerance was all there for her to see. It's a reflection, reflecting and revealing the areas within ourselves. It's never the other person. It's always us. It, reflecting and revealing the areas within ourselves that are looking to be healed. So, so, the, so where are you stretching into love? Whatever, whatever is annoying you, whatever's coming up in your emotional awareness, can you look, can you ask what the possibility is and come back to subject and see what inside of me, what's the possibility of me being healed, no matter what the other person is doing, because it's never about them. And if you heal yourself, you're gonna heal the situation, just like what happened in this Clark, the clacker and the farter, right? She starts crying, he leaves, because he can't stand crying, right? It's all perfect. It's all perfect. Let me take a quick look here. I know there's been a lot of comments. Uh, Joel, St Stephen, Paula, Castro, I love you. David, Dora, Dorata, great to see you. Renee, thank you all. Lorraine, Arturo, wow. I got a lot of people here. Ka Kathy, great to see you all. Really, really happy. Thank you for the comments. Um, and I'm glad that nobody ever annoyed you during ceremony, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> but, it ha but how about in life? How about in life where people are annoying us in life, right? They're angels. They're to reflect and reveal the areas within ourselves that are looking to be healed. Okay, so how about a spiritual stretch? How do I stretch spiritually, right? I had a big lesson in this this week. Um, the people I shared with you earlier that the people that we have here today uh, this week are all thought leaders and and pretty big and famous people um, and and I'm here and I get to um, teach some classes and the uh, thought came like who the hell am I to teach these these are my teachers these are the people I follow what, what am I what do I have to say to them and to get up in front of a room of them and and talk for three hours like I'm gonna give them some wisdom no so how what how did I stretch spiritually the spiritual stretch was to stretch into the presence, stretch into a deeper realization that it is not I, but the Father within. It is not I, but the Spirit within that does the work. Of my own self, I do nothing. Of my own self, ego JJ, ego John Jacob Mubarak, can push through some stuff. I got some knowledge. I can push through, but it's going to be inauthentic, and it's not going to be very deep. 
But when I put, that, that's my mind, right? That's the faithful servant. But when I put my faithful servant in service to the heart, right? In service to my intuition, when I stretch into the presence, the presence of the one mind, one intelligence, one love, one heart, when I lean into that, that does the work. That is what has the words. That's what puts this, all the knowledge and stuff that we know, then gets expressed in divine right time in just the right way without us having to do anything. Isn't that a great realization in life? I mean, there's things for us to do. We have to learn, we have to grow. However, we take our knowledge and we put it in service to our intuition. That's spiritual stretching, stretching into the presence. So in the same way that we stretch, emotional stretch into love, we have this practice and it's simply by noticing Noticing when I'm contracted around somebody in my life, like the clacker, <laughs> the same thing happens in terms of our spiritual stretching. Notice when I'm in my head. Notice when I'm in my performing personality, my doingness. I got to do this. I got to make it happen, right? Reverend Michael is always talking about we don't make it happen. We make it welcome. We make it welcome, we make the presence welcome because it is not I, but the Father within. Not I, but the presence within. Not I, but the eternal wisdom within that does the work. Um, so this is, uh, this is the spiritual stretch, stretching into the presence. And all we have to do is notice when I'm relying on my protective personality, when I'm relying on my ego, when I'm relying on my make it happen, I'm gonna push through this. When you notice that you're pushing through, I'm just gonna make it happen, that's when you pause. Pause for a moment and stretch into the presence. It is not I but the Father within that does the work. Allow something greater. It's when we stop relying on our small S self and, and lean into the big S self, lean into the presence. When our back is against the wall, when we've had enough, when I don't know what to do, when I don't know where to go, then we throw our hands up. I've had enough. I can't take anymore. Perfect. That's the time of transformation. That's when we finally have to stop relying on our small self, which isn't producing what we're asking it to produce and we lean into a mind that is greater than ours. The spiritual stretch is to give it up to God, give it up to the presence, give it up and watch this silent partner take over and make things better than you could ever imagine. Because anything that I imagine is coming from my mind, which is coming from my past experience, not from some future possibility. So uh, one, of the, one of the quotes from Reverend Michael today uh, celebrating the 33rd anniversary of Agape was, don't ask how, ask what the possibility is. We got to stay in spot possibility. We got to speak about possibility. That's Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith. And that's perfect for this spiritual stretch, right? How do I stretch into the presence? Ask what's possible. What's possible here? What, what is, what's emerging? What's seeking to emerge? That's another way of asking the same question. What's seeking to emerge? What's no longer serving and what's seeking to emerge? What's possible? Is there a possibility that I could be happy in this moment? The possibility of me being happy right now exists. So, so it exists somewhere. Can I bring it here? Can I be an open and clear channel for that? Right? This is, let me see what folks are saying. Um, okay, good. All right. Okay, cool. Just checking out. Uh, hey, Justin, great to see you. Uh, uh, lovely. I'll see you in January. Awesome. So spiritual stretching, mental stretch, right? The mental stretch. As we stretch mentally, it's our mental frame of mind that tends to become myopic. It tends to become narrow. So when I start to limit the possibility, I need to step into a mental stretch to where I can lift my mind above confusion. How do I lift my mind above confusion? How do I, how do I see beyond appearances? How do, I, how do I do that? Well, that's anchoring into a principle. The principle is, the principle here is that do not tarry with appearances. Jesus said, don't pay attention to circumstances. I'm paraphrasing. Don't pay attention to circumstances. Don't get bogged down in appearances. Now, he's not saying that appearances aren't real. If you come to me and say, 
I'm really sad today. My, my brother is transitioning. I'm not going to say, oh, don't get brought down in appearances. Appearances aren't real. No, those appearances are real. But their unreality lies in our interpretation of them. That's really key. I want to say that again. It's not that what we're experiencing or feeling isn't real, but their unreality lies in our interpretation of them. In other words, if my brother's transitioning, do I interpret it as this is the end, he's leaving, it's so sad, he's in pain, or do I interpret it as this is the beginning of life after life, that he's transitioning from this form to the next? You know, the same thing with my mother had dementia. Do I interpret that as, oh my God, I hate it, I, I used to have great conversations with my mom, now I can't talk to her anymore. It's the same question over and over again. Or do I flip that and interpret it as, what a gift that this being is no longer, is little by little withdrawing from the hard reality of this life. And it's making her transition easier as she transitions to life after life. How are we interpreting the situation? So the unreality of the situation, don't get bogged down in appearances, doesn't mean what you're feeling isn't real. And you should feel what you're feeling. You don't want to bypass that. But once you're done feeling what you're feeling, once you're fully engaged in that, then you can pivot and look for a, 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 a mental stretch to in, a new way of interpreting. How can I interpret this anew? What's seeking to emerge here? Same question in a different capacity. So mental stretches, let me see the possibility. Let me see what's seeking to emerge here. Let me see how can I reinterpret? How can I pivot this situation? Because the principle is that appearances aren't real. That the only thing that's real is how we interpret it. Viktor Frankl said the same thing. The great uh, Holocaust survivor and, and American psychologist said, uh, our only power resides in our ability. This is from my dear friend, Paula Castro. Our only power resides in our, our ability to respond to external stimuli. How I respond to that external stimuli is the only power I have. I can't control what's out there, but I can control how I interpret it. That's the same thing as saying, it's not that what's happening out there isn't real, but what the, it's unreality lies in how I interpret it. My ability to respond is my responsibility. So, that's, that's uh, the mental stretch, right? So we've got the uh, spiritual stretch, uh, the mental stretch, the emotional stretch, and the physical stretch. This is what the question today is, what am I stretching into? What am I, am I stretching into love? Am I stretching into possibility? Am I stretching into the presence? Am I stretching my muscles so that I can have my body as a fit instrument so I can live my purpose? What are you stretching into today? I'd love to get some responses. Um, I'd love to get some responses as to uh, what you'd like to stretch into today, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. What are you stretching into today? Live in that question. Live in possibility today. I'm so grateful to have this opportunity to speak with you. I'm really, really grateful to know this principle that the universe is progressive and constantly expanding. And I know it's constantly expanding as you, that you are constantly expansive. And so we're going to keep these principles and practices of spiritual stretching, mental stretching, emotional stretching, and physical stretching, of stretching into something, moving beyond our current paradigm. That's transformation. To transform is to go beyond the current transformation. So I'm, it's, that's another Reverend Michael uh, interpretation. So just want to give credit where credit is due. Uh, so what am I transforming today? What am I moving beyond today? What am I stretching into today? What are you stretching into today? Let me know. Much love, much joy, much peace. So grateful for you all. Looking forward to walking the path with you next Thursday. Same time, same place, baby. Actually, I'll be in LA next Thursday, but it'll be the same joyful communion in the spirit together. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Peace and riches blessings.